Today, we're gonna to be installing the E3D Revo Rapid Change that is designed as a direct swap for the Creality Sprite Extruders. So on my right here, we have the CR10 SE, which we recently did an unboxing and a first look at. And it's hot end, looks very much Revo-ish. Um, it's you know cylindrical, it's got the sock on it, it's got the heater all the way around. Whereas the Ender 3 S1 Pro is using your typical block heater with the thermistor and the heater cartridge kind of slid into the side. The Rapid Change Revo Upgrade Kit will work on both of them. It's 24 volts, it's designed to be a direct plug and play swap for these Sprite extruders on both of these. Um, it uses a thermistor that's completely compatible with these. You don't need to change the thermistor type or flash the firmware or any of that kind of stuff. Um, I think it's a more appreciable upgrade on a older model like this one that's using that block heater style. But also in this case, it's an upgrade to the fan assembly. So this has a good cooling fan shroud and, and fan uh, uh, airflow direction. Uh, that I talked about in that review. This is just cooling straight from the front on this little angled fan. In this, I think they call it the fully loaded kit version of this, we have a bunch of things in addition to the hot end. So we have the hot end itself here, and then it comes with a printed fan shroud, specifically for this angled fan, that will put the fan on a slightly less steep angle, but more importantly, it will direct the air to two different sides, to the front and to the left side of the nozzle, so getting more complete coverage from a cooling perspective. Another little tiny spacer bracket and a couple bolts. And then a collection of nozzles. So the nozzle in here is their standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle, but it comes with three others, uh, 0.8, a 0.6, and a 0.25. Um, so you have quite a variety, and these are really quick to swap if you've ever used the Revo stuff. So I'm gonna get rid of this machine and we'll start tearing this one apart. So the first thing we're going to do is disconnect this cable and the, uh, the heater block is actually held in by a set screw in the back. So we need to remove this from the carriage here. So the entire Sprite extruder is held on to the X carriage bracket here um, by these, these bolts. Now that we've got these four removed, the whole assembly just comes right off. So all of this is plug and play. There's a little bit of hot glue on here, so we'll have to deal with that, kind of hack away at that. But we're going to pull out the connector here for the, um, the heater, the connector here for the thermistor, disconnect both of those, and then you can see the set screw right in that little semicircle there, and that set screw is holding this in there. So I'm gonna work on the glue first. And you wanna be very careful here because if you're too aggressive, I'm sure you could break something. So I've managed to remove that, and we should be able to just slide this out. Okay, there we go. Do the same on this one. As you can see, I've made a mess here. After a little bit of struggling, I got enough glue off and I was able to get that out. And now we'll get a small Allen key, and I'm just gonna loosen the set screw. You don't need to pull it all the way out. There are two screws here that are anchoring that to the heat sink. So as luck would have it, both of these were stripped. Um, and so I couldn't get them undone. And so what I've taken is extremely beefy flush cutters and I'm going to actually break the two bolts underneath the block there, snip them. Uh, be very careful, as you can see here, I've already snapped the tip off of this and it went flying. So wear safety glasses, but I've chosen to cut those. Um, you could use a Dremel tool or an oscillating tool, just be very careful. Once they were cut though, and that set screw is already loosened, this will just slide right out. So now those are just kind of cut flush there. And we can cast this aside. The Revo doesn't use any of that. It just uses the set screw to hold itself. There's one spot on here that is flat. So align that flat section with that back set screw. Should slide right in. And then just tighten the set screw before we go any further. So now that's not going anywhere. This can still travel like that, but it's not twisting or rotating or anything. And now we can just reconnect the two cables. So this little tag here just shows the serial number and that it's 24 volts. 
Um, I'm gonna opt to actually cut this off. And then connect that one into here. And this one into the thermistor spot. So these only go in one way. So if it's not going in one way, flip it 180 degrees. The two little extra teeth or two little raised sections right there and there should be facing you, not facing down. Make sure they're all the way in. If you want to, you could secure them with a dab of hot glue. Just don't go crazy on it. The heater itself kind of rotates. So you can rotate this to get the wires to come out the side. And now we will swap the fan shroud. Because as you can see, this sits down further than the original did. Um, sits down maybe 10 millimeters further. Um, and so that would be why we have this little spacer bracket, actually five millimeters further. We have this little spacer bracket, and that's to space the um, probe to bring it further down in line with how far down the nozzle is now. Um, and then we have the bracket to bring the fan down. So I'm going to take the probe off first to get access to all the fan screws. And just make sure you're keeping track of which screws are which in case they are different. I'm going to put the probe ones at the back of the bed there. So now with the probe free, I'll just disconnect the wire from the top and then set the probe aside. And now we can get easier access to that screw. So we'll take that one out. And there's two more on this side. So now we need to get the fan itself out of this little metal bracket and it's from the top. The screws go into those spots there. And these screws on this end, because of the fan shroud, are likely longer than the other side, so just keep them separate. And with those four screws out, this comes off, this comes off, there's a couple washers. And we can discard this. We're also not gonna need the original fan shroud either. So this little notch here, this little groove, is where the wires are going to align with. So this is going to be fan side up, and like I said, with the wires at that groove. And then you should be able to see right through the bolt holes here and right through the other side of the, of the bracket. And we're just going to self tap it in. And I will use the longer um, bolts at the front, much like they were in the stock formation. And then bolt these two together. So I've got all four of those um, bolts holding the fan on there. And the fan shroud is going to connect to these two points, which were two of the three points that the original fan shroud connected to. Um, there's nothing on the other side now. And we'll use the same kind of button head screws here that came out. There we go. Now, as you can see there, the air is directed right to the tip. Um, it would be nice if there was like a little bit of adjustability. Maybe if I loosen those bolts a little bit, there might be a tiny, tiny bit of play. So it looks like this one's directing air on an angle that will go right to the tip. But this one might actually be a little bit high and hitting more the side here than the tip. But we'll leave it like that. It's definitely going to clear. It's going to clear the print, so it's not going to be an issue. And then with that, we should be able to reconnect the probe. And so as I mentioned, we've got a spacer here and some new bolts. If we take the original one here, the spacer fits just like that. Um, we're probably going to want to connect the cable maybe first, just to make it a little easier on us. And then that will bolt on to there. And we're bolting up from the bottom, so we're using these new longer screws through our spacer, which we might have to kind of thread them in, maybe just press them through. We'll see. There we go. If they don't just slide through, you can just spin them and kind of clear the, clear the way. Okay, so we've got those in there. And there's these two self-tapping screws. Now that I see those, those may have been meant to replace the longer screws that were holding the fan to the original fan shroud at the longer screws at the front. You can see how those stick out. Now, because that is on an angle, they're sticking out. They might be unsightly, um, but they're not causing an issue per se. Um, you could take them out and use these, um, which are just a little bit shorter. But I'm not gonna take it off to do that. I'm just gonna leave them 
Um, if I wanted to, I, I could go through that hassle or if I just paid attention when I was assembling it in the first place. And then screw back through the bottom into the original bracket. So with it bolted up, you can just make sure that the wire for the fan is kind of tucked between the probe and the fan shroud. I'll hold it there. And even though I talked about it, I didn't do it. Um, I'm just gonna connect the cable now. And maybe I'll use an Allen key here. Just make sure it's completely seated. There we go. Okay, so that's what it looks like now. And we should be able to just rest that like that. Make sure the wires are not getting pinched anywhere here. It's fine, they can stick out the side like that just fine. So then we'll use the screws that we originally pulled out of here to reattach this. And there should be four of them. Do the first one a little bit lightly, and then that way it gives you a little bit of wiggle room to make sure the rest of them are aligned as well. So with any luck, when you're done, it looks something like that. So now not only are we you know, within the Revo ecosystem of, of nozzles, but we didn't have to print any parts to swap it. We didn't have to modify the firmware. Um, it's about as plug and play as, as, as it's ever been. So just before we plug the machine back in, let's reconnect the cable to the hot end. And reseat it in this little bracket. Make sure there's enough slack. There we go. Like that, okay. All right, the probe deployed. That's a good sign. And I'm just going to preheat. So on the main screen on this firmware, I hit ready, which is homing all axes here. In the ready screen there, once it's homed all the axes, um, you can go to axis move if you wanna move it around, or you can go to manual and here you'll see nozzle temperature. So I'm gonna set the nozzle temperature to say 200 degrees. As the nozzle temperature warms up, we should hear the hot end cooling fan for the heat sink here kick in. There it is. Uh, I think it's about 50 degrees Celsius or so where that kicks in. And we should be able to test the part cooling fan under cooling. There we go, I can see the cooling fan moving here at the top. Whenever you make a change like this to anything that would impact the heating and cooling of your hot end, so if you changed the heater cartridge, if you changed the heater block, or in this case, we did all of the above, you're usually best served to do a PID tuning, and that's just recalibrating the rate at which the hot end heats up and cools down when it's no longer being energized. And then once you have the PID tuning calibration, make sure you commit and fully save those new PID values into the firmware. So the next time you boot the machine, it knows the characteristics of that hot end. So with the use of that spacer and everything as supplied, there should be no change to your Z offset. So that's the, the delta between where the tip of the nozzle is and where the probe is when it touches the bed. Um, the probe is usually you know, lower than the tip, obviously, when it touches the bed. So that difference is your Z offset. Should be the same, but if you find that you do your bed leveling and the nozzle is too close or too far away from the bed, um, then you're going to want to go through the Z offset calibration process again for your particular printer. Um, but this should keep it as close to the stock value as is basically possible. There you go. In about 30 minutes tops, start to finish, um, including us getting stuck with a couple stripped bolts, uh, you, should, you should be able to swap your spread extruder to use the E3D Revo system. Hopefully you found all that useful. Remember, like and subscribe and ring the bell to see more. Thanks for watching.